All right, we now welcome on the Spitting Chicklet Boys. It is long time coming here. Biz Nasty, Paul Bissonette, and Ryan Whitney uh, in studio. So apologies in advance for when this goes off the rails. But boys, great to have you here. Appreciate you joining us. I just want to say before Ryan starts talking, we have to do a disclaimer for journalistic integrity. Um, he is. Oh, bring a, up the NHL. He's, yeah, a, he's a puppet of Gary Bettman. He works for the NHL. Better than a muppet. Well, so anything no, that he and, has to say, it's actually Gary Bettman's hand well, up his butt, making his mouth move. And while we're mentioning um, where people work, Biz, you want to tell the people? I work Phoenix for the, Coyotes, an NHL hockey team. We yeah. we, uh, we Your name's Arizona now. Yeah. yeah, it's not Phoenix. Yeah, but we talk about gambling a lot on our podcast, and I just mention a lot that because I'm hired by an NHL team that I'm not allowed to do that legally. Well, I gamble my dick off, so we can talk about that here. Yeah. And you're um, the worst gambler in the world. Um, your boss is Dave Portnoy, bro, and you're not exactly uh, John Anthony. So <laughs> let's uh, let's hold the horses here. <laughs> that was a great movie. Come on yes, here, bro. Great movie. I great it. movie. I don't remember the name of the movie. I remember right. the name of him. All right, let's talk a little hockey to start, and then we'll just let it go wherever. Okay. The We're taping this in the middle of the Capitals-Tampa Bay game. Let's just assume Tampa wins this game. Are you I'm now? Are we now that. flipping to the Caps? Are have to be worried because they look like they were in total control. No way. Um, for me, you you know you lose the first game at home, but you're thinking, all right, listen, we're still up two one, and we have a home game coming up here. So if you lose game two, then you start panicking going back there for game five. But for right now, I mean, Washington's actually played good. I mean, granted, it's only the second period. PFT's having a ulcer over there watching mm-hmm. them lose but i don't think they have anything to worry about i mean they look good their d looks really good um i still like them to win the series that was my pick biz pick tampa because he's an idiot i yeah. got bad news uh well, for me uh it's 4-1 now oh so okay, live i think update, i think we can one. i, like, I oh. think we can write this one off for the cats i'd like yeah, to jump right. in on the last comment yes. there uh, whitney I'm bet on the lightning currently tonight. i'm Woo! currently in the the picks in our playoff brackets. I'm nine and three right now. He's four and eight. Ooh, that's three and eight. Good. All right. So what that's about impossible? Nine, so, so it's two. Let's just say it's two one Tampa, barring a miracle comeback. The other series, the, the Lightning, or sorry, the Golden Knights and the Jets going back to Las Vegas. I'm sick of the. I'm sick of the Golden Knights. Yeah, I think you're kind of like. I think you're just, like, forcing this take a little bit. No, I'm not like, forcing it. I just like the Canadian teams. Shout out to Biz Nasty. I'd like to see a Canadian team be in the Stanley Cup Finals for the first time in, like, forever. But don't you – isn't there something about, like, the pregame ceremony that, as a big hockey guy, rubs you the wrong way? They're yeah, kind of, like they're, a little too showman. Yeah, they're like, like game just drop the fucking puck. They're the yeah. NBA of the NHL. I can understand that, but you have to think of it on a money side of things. Like, they're, it's Vegas. They're, they're there to entertain. They're there to put fans in the seats, and everyone's getting fucked up. There's no – you know, they can drink all you game can't long. Swear. Don't swear on this podcast. Seriously? Yeah, yeah. only you. Whitney, yeah. you can cuss. Yeah, you can say anything you <laughs> I, uh, want. I, I was grandfathered into the cussing. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. um, Go actually, ahead. you guys you know, aren't going to fucking I, bully me on this I, podcast. I, I, I think we already did. <laughs> no. Yeah. I'm going to okay. swear. Okay. Don't right. put you us won't. in mental pretzels, but they can't physically bully us. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I think that that entire pregame ceremony is based upon the fact that they're like, all right, people are probably on Molly, shrooms. Yep. Yep. Uh, LSD. Every, 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 LSD like, I mean, like, sure. dude, you're in Vegas yeah. at a game. You're waffled, and so let's do something early to at least get these people like, what is going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. distract them from the play because we don't know how this year's going to go. They went into it thinking, we got to distract them from what this team's going to do on the ice, all these scrubs and has-beens, and then it's just been – the thing about them moving on is, like, I feel like for you, you'd love it. I mean, it's – I will say the one thing you make sense is it's not a great look for the NHL in a sense right. that like I understand it was different this year and, and Vegas drafted specifically Rear Ad actually explained this to me Vegas drafted specifically to win right now instead of like all right we're going to try to build this no, thing No that's not true Okay, so explain to me no, how they wanted not true. To, No, they wanted to load up on assets on the back end. They ended up getting a good squad based on the rules. But they, they did. Yeah, so how were the rules different? You were, you usually you had you 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 were allowed to protect I think five defensemen and nine forwards and I, dude obviously my number is going to be a little off here. It's yeah. not like I work at NHL Network. I wouldn't know anything. Like, but <laughs> but it's now I think Propaganda. it was I think it was I think it was um, six forwards and three D. They were only allowed to this time. Got so it. every team it's, is just a bigger pool of guys to choose from. Got it. And I, they got I, a goalie, dude. They I mean that's flurry. smart by the mm-hmm. NHL too to try to get your team your expansion teams good right away. Build a fan base. It's just, you know, you guys, a lot of time, I'm part of my take, it's like hot seat, right? Who's on the hot seat? Yeah. Every GM around the league is like, all right, this team's lighting it up. Like, my owner's going to be like, why the fuck isn't your right. team? So good? everyone's He's on the hot seat besides Vegas. Hot seat NHL. I love it. Yes. It's a hot, hot seat, seat NHL. The entire league. Now, so, so my take is right. 
Well, no, but I still think no. That 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 kind of goes away from. I think it would be really cool to see them in the finals. And I think, I know this is like a little overstatement that you know it's not hockey's not that popular in America. Blah blah blah. We know all you basketball peasants. <laughs> but to have Vegas in, I seriously think like any mainstream media is going to be involved in it. Yeah, like a, true. It, it'll be a mm-hmm. it'll be a way bigger story than if it's Winnipeg, Washington. And well, and the fact that just more media go because it's Vegas, like Nashville. Yeah, like, last honey, year. I got to go to the yeah. cup finals this year. Like, you cover uh, cricket. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> no, it's, uh, no, I got to go. Uh, I'm freelancing. I'm freelancing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta, so, I'll see you in a week. Ryan taught me a new term tonight, man rocket. He said, "You he said that uh, yeah, Willie was I'm a man, one, a man rocket, missile, right? Man missile, man, man missile, yeah, yeah, a man yeah. missile. Like which one? one which one it's was it? You can audible. I said you man can audible at the line. There's a uh, bunch Omaha. of different ones. There's a bunch yeah. of different ones. What is a man rocket? Just a good-looking fucking NHLer. Okay, it's a beauty. <laughs> No, no, be- no beauty's like That's us. A good like, guy. You can be ugly as shit no. with a big snout and big ears and be a beauty, but to be a man rocket, you got to be Why did you point at me hot. when you said that? Uh, no reason. Big snout. <laughs> no reason. <laughs> big snout. That was a quick biz, one. Biz has I an this snout yeah. on his, did. So, I on his face. Nose. From, a, from an actual hockey perspective, I haven't paid that much attention to uh, the Winnipeg Jets. Like, what, why are they good? Because they fucking dominated – the they, Knights' the first game. They got a big mobile team, and, and they just cover a lot of ice. I mean, look at all their top players. I mean, Blake big Wheeler, buff. Big Buff. I mean, you're familiar with him. Why, yes. don't, you, why don't you talk about it? Well, I, I love Big Buff. Well, you were in Chicago when yeah, you were there, right? Yeah, I love Big, big Buff. Although I think he was there. Right he, was, no, he was a forward I, No, I said that he, he – when Big Buff first came out, like, you did not think he would end up being as skilled as he is now. His because his game was different. He was because he was by, asked to do different things with the Blackhawks. A Blackhawks yeah. scout yeah. said he was the second worst draft pick the Blackhawks ever made when they picked him. Right. Unfortunately, the story isn't as cool because I don't know who the first one. But was. I didn't is, keep reading the article. But <laughs> what Big Buff is is he is a playoff hockey guy because you need those yeah. big yeah. bodies and the yeah. guys who get the dirty goals and shit. Big like time, that. big time. But I, I, I've said this about Buff. He's he's a he's a big piece. He can't be the guy because last year when right. he was more of the guy in playoffs. He got running around a bit, not trying to do too much. And who they got beat out by Anaheim? They got swept. They didn't make the playoffs last year, I don't think, dude. I think they got swept by Anaheim last year. Didn't they they? Made two hockey, two hockey. Maybe it was two years, two years ago they got yeah. swept in, in the first uh, um, round. Why Whitney's now just go, Do you guys have a st- so. statistician? <laughs> I'm a yeah, we got yeah. Well, we have sabermetrics. Yeah, we'll so. we'll correct it at the end of the show. We uh, go hey, back. But no, but one of you guys wanted, is wrong. No, quickly, yeah. I wanted to say PFT that, that uh, you. I want to get respect out to Mark Shifley. I don't know if you've been watching the West Conference. He's a I'd say superstar now, Shifley. Ooh, he's he's incredible. And, uh, oh yeah. So he like I, people are starting to realize who he is. Kind of Ryan Getzlaff ish, um, dominant player, and he's you know the best forward up front. And then they have guys like Lion A. We didn't even mention. They're just they have the best forwards in the league, and their goalie's been great. Their goalie set the record this year for most wins in the regular season by an American goalie. So shout Woo! out, shout Look out to us. So you would say America, they have better. Suck it, yeah. Yeah. You, you'd say they have uh, <laughs> more forward depth than uh, Tampa everyone. Bay. Everyone, really, so, everyone. Wow. Okay. Everyone. That's I he's mean, the expert. Yeah, I would say it's pretty close. I mean, I, I'm okay with giving Winnipeg the edge, but you're not even like you're not even, no, like, I won't even maybe debating. Not it. even close. He's not oh. embracing debate. No, he's not. He's not. He's not embracing <laughs> no. debate at, at all. Really, well, uh, how about this embrace debate? We talked about it a little bit earlier on the uh, on the Periscope Live, but Braden Holtby's beard, his playoff beard, is it too much? Because that is a fucking neck beard. That makes Andrew Luck look like he's got oh, a Sidney Crosby dude, beard. Andrew We've got Luck. Whitney bu- doing Andrew doodles Luck, and such... business on Bumble. No, I'm, I'm going back to see that play. This, this is how I, like, just no, my brain works. Because like, when I said that they got swept by Anaheim in the first round, he dismissed me like I was a peasant. Because they didn't make the playoffs last year. Okay, that's fine. But right, it but might move have been on two, to, two years to ago. But move on to PFT's then. question about playoff beards. Yeah, dude, it's a nasty neared. Um, I mean, <laughs> but it's good. I mean, in a sense, like... He's kind of lo- looks like Hank, actually. Yeah, a little like bit. Pretty, a little pretty, bit. I mean, no, but Hank at least he trims it up. Hank, yeah. Hank eliminates the neck part. His neck Andrew beard like, <laughs> actually <laughs> connects like to his nipples. <laughs> well, you know, uh, no, it wasn't the Lions' you know, fault, even though I got back ten times. Peyton called no, me got, after and said, "You gotta go to dinner." Yeah, I gotta get rid place. of that ball. These are the worst. I gotta get rid of that. <laughs> you know, I can't take that sack. <laughs> That's all my fault. But that one's on me. <laughs> I was trying to throw balls. Just fucking say something honest. Oh man, shave your neard, you fuck. Uh, Biz, tell us your best story from when you uh, played in NHL for like three games. <laughs> Big Cat's been just oh, carving oh, you oh, all week. Oh, oh he's like, on me too. No, I, I mean I got decent yeah, stories. We're uh, like good, we're here's good the Chicago friends. one. Okay. Uh, I had my I had uh, my first ever rookie party in Chicago, and while we're at Gibson Steakhouse, we don't pay for another three days, so we're there early. And there was yeah. actually the Hawks were playing that night at home, 
And you know they always have a rocket shoot for the empty net. You, they took it away, but yeah. Oh, why? Because it's it's the times have changed. Oh it's my God. Are you, but they would always pick it's, two it's ugly guys and then a hot chick, yeah, yeah, so yeah, that yeah. so so nobody would say shit. No, they usually pick one little kid, yeah. an ugly guy, and or Mister T. Yeah, and then They're like Zah, yeah. Nate, go ahead. Yeah, and, and then, then some rocket. Be yeah, a, yeah like a Margot Robbie or some <laughs> fucking <laughs> rocket launcher. That's a girl. Yeah, yeah, man, rocket missile, man, rocket launcher. Okay. Uh, so she's shooting. I'm like, I'm like hooting and hollering. The whole room is because we have a private room at Gibson. It's not a big deal. And uh, after the game, we end up going out to some club called Cuvée. Was yes, it Cu- yes. Uh-huh. And, Paris too. And this girl Paris walks club. in, and I'm like, I'm like, man, that's the. F- I think that's the fucking girl who shot the puck. And the boys are like, shut up, Biz, you idiot. Like how you know how you do all the yeah, time, yeah, Biz, yeah. idiot. Yeah, fucking nice snout, you pussy. <laughs> anyway, so. I'm like, that's a girl. So I call her over. I say, you the girl who shot the puck? She goes, yeah. And then behind her was fucking Danielle Pyatt. No shit. Taylor Pyatt met his wife at our rookie party. So it was her friend, Danielle. It was her birthday. They were out. She was shit-faced. I, I call her over, and she goes right over to the man missile, Daniel pa- uh, yeah. Taylor Pyatt, who yes. I was talking about. Yes, yeah. best eyes ever. Best uh-huh. eyes in the, the league. Guy who I, the guy who I told you out there. So you introduced yeah. him to his I, old lady. Yeah, yeah that's, you that's why I went to the wedding. Oh, You're yeah. a matchmaker. Wow. I'm a match. wow. That's a great story. And Did you, uh, how'd it go with the friend? Uh, oh, no. Uh, uh, one of the. So one of the other guys on the team ended up crushing the friend. A lot of excuses. A lot of excuses. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, I don't know. What happened yeah. was this guy came yeah. over and was like, this kid played I, one you know, night I like her. I, I got one she lined up press, for so the next night because yeah. we were staying there, and, and she worked at the Hermes store down by the Ooh. Bur- the Barneys. Ooh, He's like, I know I was fancy. Off now. fancy. <laughs> she, she gave me some discount code <laughs> well, on crocodile leather. That's a good story. All right, Wit, you tell your best story. My best. That wasn't my best. You no, just that, me, was me, that, was that was your best you story. You for your best story. That was your best. And story. your best story was there was one night I didn't get laid. Yeah, the, the time I didn't fuck the hot chick. <laughs> Great story, Biz. The time they found out I was a uh, healthy scratch the past 19 games, it didn't go. Well. Oh yeah. So we. Yeah, how did that? How did that? Because I remember, uh, you know, you were in the bar stool. You you've been a bar a stoolie forever. I was the first athlete stoolie. Yeah. So I remember like rooting for you when you were in Edmonton, and they started healthy scratching you. Yeah. How does that like? Wh- what happens when that when when you start getting healthy scratched in an NHL game? Like, do you, are you just like fuck this? I want to get out of here. Uh, o- only part of my take you come on and, and they yeah. just gets to tell his favorite story ever, and I get to tell about when my yeah. career fell apart. Yeah, I getting scratched. So, Thanks yeah. a lot, big cat. I never got healthy um, scratched. Yeah. yeah, I know because you never played a minute. You're just a kid who sat and chirped people from the stands playing your video games, <laughs> being fucking <laughs> yeah. Walsh, Steve Connor Walchuk in the '97 finals, pretending yeah. not to care about anything. You're goddamn right, that was me. <laughs> and, and hiding his and real always, feelings. Uh, yeah. Well. What happened for me is I busted my ankle up. I was actually having the best year of my career in Evans. <laughs> He's like that guy in high school to make. He's like, yeah, oh, I knocked up my girlfriend. Those over yeah. There. Knocked up, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> one coach fucked me. No, I got my busted up my ankle and I really couldn't skate again. And then it just started snowballing. I was terrible. I was going out for dinners. I'd be cutting up my steak. I think I've said this on before. And some guy'd come up. You suck, Whitney. I'm like, dude, I'm trying to eat my filet mignon. Not a big deal. It's 57 bucks. Couldn't eat. You probably couldn't even afford a fucking appetizer. But it was a tough go for me in Edmonton. It wasn't great. It really wasn't. Yeah. One of my favorite stories, though, and I just thought of this. Uh, me and Skidari, Rob Skidari, buddy oh, of mine, man. we got uh, crushed. We stayed in Montreal after the game. We won. <laughs> and you never get to stay over, really, in the NHL. You usually got to get right out. So when you play and can just chill in the locker room and then go out. So we got crushed in Montreal, and we get in the car. Um, get outside the bar. It was like 2.30, and we're loaded. I get in the cab. I'm like, the Ritz-Carlton. Yeah, we stay at the Ritz. Ritz-Carlton. The driver's like French. He's like, uh, what are you talking about? I was like, Ritz-Carlton. Drive us to the fucking Ritz-Carlton. <laughs> and he's like, uh, guys, guys, and Scuderi's like, will you just drive us to the Ritz Carlton for Christ's sake? The guy's like, all right. <laughs> the Ritz Carlton. <laughs> it was 20 yards away from where we were. <laughs> and you know, the meter's like 425. I was like, ah, here's five bucks, buddy. Like that. <laughs> uh, I've heard, I had Scuderi tell me that story because oh, I play with him. must be really hurt. Uh, Scott's a, oh. We had another story. I won't even say who the guy was. He, uh, he came back late one night in Long Island. He went into the city and shows up the next day for the bus at like six in the morning, seven in the morning. P- cab pulls up. It's like, oh, it, that's got to be him. He gets out of the driver's seat, dude. In the <laughs> middle of the ride from Long Island, the cab he pulled over on the highway. He's like, I can't drive anymore. I'm fucked up. So then the kid had to finish the ride in the taxi back to the team bus. <laughs> you said, Biz, you said that the, the NHL has changed, though. Those guys don't go out like they used to. Uh, yeah, I, I think Which that's just an when my career kind of took a spiral, and so did 
Ryan's. And yeah. I think he's playing on his ankle. But yeah. uh, we're, we're a little old school in the sense where we like to go out after games for about 30 beers and, you know, <laughs> just, just a couple casuals. And yeah. Well, when I came – when we came into the league, I was like Lyle Lodeline. You guys remember Lyle Lodeline? Oh, man, that guy. Long <sighs> career, tough as shit. He actually will remind you every day he has the record for most assists in a game by a Montreal defenseman. Five assists one day. Broke oh, Doug oh, Harvey's record. Very prestigious. So, <laughs> so he – my rookie year of training camp, he's like, hey, kid, you know, as a defenseman, hey, let's go out to lunch, kid. Take you out to lunch. He starts ordering beers at lunch. I'm like, what am I do? This guy's a veteran. Yeah, can't keep say it. no. Next thing you know, it's 730. Bullied. He's like, hey, can we get the dinner menu? And we're still boozing. I was like, this is training camp. I'm <laughs> trying to make the team. <laughs> Legit. But guys, it was just, it's just way different. Lyle right Odeline guys refused to go out to lunch with him because they knew it would turn An Odie lunch. Dinner. You get it home would... at 3 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> cool. He could drink a case of beer a day, just get up like it was nothing. Would you, what do you call them now? Hockey nerds? Yeah, I mean, I, it, it's not a, it's not like a chirp either. It's just, yeah, it's just like, like there's the, so much money now, and and kids. What's different is these kids are playing at 18 now. It's like it never happened before. Maybe a kid drafted first overall would play the next year, but it just took years. And now, uh, when you're draft, I mean, I think right after the draft, well, you, there's 10 guys in the league the next year. Right, and you talked about it out there, and 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 how these kids like if if something goes wrong, they're like calling their agent instantly. I used to have Michael Tarian, you know, as a rookie in pro hockey, not even the NHL. Business and agent a, blocked his number. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I what couldn't even call then? my – Oh, but if you make a mistake, he sits you down in front of the boys and he just belittles you. You get, like, tears rolling down your face, calling you a pussy and you're never going to play again. You're going to send you to the East Coast Hockey League in Wheeling, West Virginia. This guy, mm, told, that sounds the guy, rough. This guy told the guy in the minors, he goes – how does your wife fuck you? <laughs> <laughs> That's a coach talk. A coach <laughs> in pro hockey. But now saying that, it, it like maybe become a man because you gotta like take that shit. You know, right. like you're getting fucking. Hey, you make a mistake, you're gonna get reamed out. Yeah. You don't get sent to fucking HR so HR can be like, hey, mm-hmm. you know, um, you kind of fucked the company over for twenty five grand. But it's there. different now. Like, and, and what happens is these younger kids like. They didn't speak, dude. I didn't say a word. I actually made a biggest mistake. My first game in Pittsburgh, Mario Lemieux was playing Mark Recchi, and I was Heard the loud him. guy in the minors because I was, you know, I was, I'd already played you? a year. Yeah, me. Can you believe it? And so I'm sitting there, and I'm tying my skates, and, you know, usually in the minors, I'd be like, hey, let's go, bud. Here we go. Let's go, bud. And I was like, all right, I'll do the same thing. It's the NHL. And I was like, all right, wrecking ball, fucking right there, wrecking ball. Mark Recchi, he's got like 1,300 games at the time, and everyone's just like this. Shut up, like, dude! Don't speak in this locker room. You're, yeah. and now these, I mean, these kids are like running the show, and you can't say anything yeah, to them. Changing the stereo, and you're like, yeah, you're like, you just touch the they're stereo. They're putting Gucci gang on. You're like, what if, the you fuck? Talk, if you take away business stereo, what's he got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he doesn't. Play. I hand out the yeah. tape. I keep the water bottles full, and, and this, that was my job. I was, it's hard. It's a hard job because you got to keep everybody happy. There's you you never know, a guy a like Canadian man stereo. Like, yeah, don't PM. change it off. Tragically hip, or, or you're gonna come out. Yeah. Jacket. Well, no, I mean you just got to mix it up. Somebody likes country. Okay, well the the Euros need a little fucking disco in there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Radoslav Kleza comes in and goes, I want them disco. Well, are you guys like old grumpy NBA players that are like, the game was better in my day? Or, or do you acknowledge no, that? No, no, it's no, way no. better because, now. No, because my knees exploded way, trying to keep up. Ga- the yeah. game is so much better now. And when you say old and grumpy, there's a generation above us that w- the best players didn't make much money. It might be like two above us now. Oh, yeah, they're better. But for me, like, I love seeing guys get paid. Like uh, my, my favorite players are the most overpaid players in the league. I'm yeah, like, Teddy, yes, get as much money as you can. Where there's Rick older, DiPietro's, you're, you got you got to like. He's a, a BU guy. Yeah, you got you got a huge poster of him on your. No, I don't know Frankie him personally. Yeah. yeah. Um. But no, like you know, a lot of guys and their like current GMs. I think of that like were good players but, and would have made now you know enough to not do anything the rest of their lives and they're just kind of bitter about it. Whereas I love seeing guys get paid. Now they got to do like Pete Rose stuff, go on signing tours just to you know yeah, make a couple right. bucks, pay yeah, the mortgage. Yeah, yeah. I want to ask like you. You know who's a, a, who complains about that a lot is Guy Lafleur. Yeah, he's always in the Montreal meeting ripping guys for making money. It's like, hey man, fucking inflation. Like I don't know, I wasn't your fucking agent. Right, mm-hmm. it's I not want, our fault, Guy. Maybe I, you should. I want you guys to talk real quick about the uh, the Russian credit cards that you brought up earlier. What's that about? He he. I mean, I don't. I just heard. I don't know that. No, I just I, I, I've heard some some rumblings, and it's been uh, confirmed by a few guys that like Putin basically hands out credit cards to all these high-end Russian hockey players like Malkin and, and, and Ovechkin where basically they could just go like if say they want to pop bottles one night they just go they just put it on the Russian credit card just like and then, some Russian billionaire you never some Russian billionaire you ever party on the just, Russian credit card uh, I uh, one game in Washington I went to a Russian after hours and all those guys were there because I knew Mike Green when he was playing with uh, Washington because we'd won a under 18 gold medal we were give- <laughs> We won an under-18 gold medal with Team Canada. Not a big deal. And 
so I looked, linked up with him after the game, and he brought us to this, like, underground Russian club that all these guys were, like, hanging out with KGB dudes. It was a little shady, but I was hanging out with Ovi. I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> no, exactly. I mean, they had that website, like, where they're, like, all for Putin. Like, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So, well, I mean, it's that, not... that was mostly Malkin that did that. You could tell that. I Vesken, think Ovi was part of um, it. He, o- Ovi, you could tell they kind of twisted his arm. is mostly Malkin deal. Yeah, like, twist your arm like, hey, Here's dude, my question you to you. Yeah. Would you care what, guy, uh, what political views a guy had if he gave you an unlimited credit card? Absolutely not. No, yeah, you give me. It'd be one. tough if you killed people. Yeah, but yeah, probably. Well, if you killed journalists that that I, was, I didn't I was like, I don't read the happened. news, so Jay I don't Mariotti. even know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All my information I get from inside hockey locker rooms, so yeah. it's mostly yeah, stories just, about guys crushing chicks from Bumble. Yeah. <laughs> but what happened with the journal? Did Putin? Jay yeah, I was, I was in Moscow yeah, when Putin. that happened. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. It was a Ukrainian man, I believe, who really was outspoken against him. I was leaving four days later, and they were like. Yeah, that guy got gunned down in like the public the other night. I was like, holy Listen, shit. Listen, here, here's the thing: if you turn down the credit card, then that makes you a target. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like either you go out and you have yeah. a great time all the time, and you don't pay for anything. Do you think they're required? Or you get killed. It's the easiest. Would you rather ever? So here's another thing: Do you think Malkin was required a, a certain amount of uh, Instagram and Twitter posts for the credit card? Mm. I, I think it, I think Malkin's the ringleader behind this whole thing. Okay, so you think he's doing it out of the kindness of his heart, or yeah. lack thereof? Yeah, coldness of his heart. The coldness of his heart. I think Malkin is an evil person, and Ovechkin is a great person. <laughs> I don't know. He posted the that. Caps fan, I, dude. He's here's the thing. I, 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 Malkin posted that pic with Putin, and he kind of he's kind of like clowning him a little bit. I don't think you clowned Vladimir, dude. I mean, he kind of. Okay. I actually get worried sometimes when I like talk about KHL stuff. I'm I like, know. I, I think you're gonna like get gunned some, down. There's like some yeah. side. You're target. Like, dude, oh shit, we're journalists. Point, well, they, yeah, like, you're target. Well, they I just, just realized that. But yeah. I loved it in Russia. It was the best. The food was incredible. Yeah. Um, where uh, do you guys think that you could have shut down Vladimir Putin one on one? Because he's pretty scored five good. goals on his birthday. Uh, yeah, but it, he had scored seven, seven. the year yeah, before. Yeah, I gave you so that fact. In that, oh, did you? Yeah. Was that you yesterday? Yeah. It's been a long week at the office here. Um. He can't even skate, for Christ's sake. I mean, Whoa. yeah, I could shut him you down. You just said you don't he want to say bad goals. things about him. But I'm, uh, but I'm also honest to the game. Okay. That's honest like the that's above a hat trick. What's a five-goal game? What do you even call that? That's a, Vlad- um, that's a Putin hat trick. That's a Mario Lemieux, the only guy to score f- five goals in a game all five different ways. Never heard of him. Even strength, shorthanded, power play, penalty shot, empty net goal. Woo! Mm, empty netter. The that's icing nice. On the I don't think that'll ever happen again. That's nice. Mm. Uh, what's going on on Bumble there? You, you, we, I think we've lost you there, Biz. Nothing. Okay. Well, Biz, give us a couple – we'll wrap this up in a second, but give us a couple uh, hockey lingo terms that we haven't had in a while. You gave us the uh, – what was it? The uh, it's hard to grocery think stick? Yeah, yeah, grocery stick? Awesome. Yeah. Grocery stick? Yeah, grocery stick. You were a grocery stick, weren't you? Yeah. I just heard it so many times. I just – it's kind of lost its luster. You're a pigeon? Yeah, pigeon's a good one. Muppet. I like the way it rolls off the tongue. Yeah. What else? You Muppets got get a little old. Wit doesn't like Muppet anymore. No, no, okay. no I, I never said it. Dude, I, I made it. I just said the joke one day, and then this office, whatever I say, it just ends up catching fire. Yeah, you know, people You're are using it guy. against yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. everyone I, loves you. You know, it's just unfair when that happens to a guy like me. <laughs> but like hockey, t- it's really actually hard to think of hockey terms when you're. If we were in the locker room right now, I'd, they'd just be flying off our tongue. But right now, when you're just like sitting here with these two clowns who've never played a day of hockey, this in their is our life, locker room. Yeah, locker room, buddy. This is our locker room. It is. You guys have your own slang, like all. The no, we don't do inside jokes on the show. Yeah. Kind of shit. Whoa, like, whoa! No, but like you say that a lot. That's your like that's your thing, right? Well, we stole it from ESPN, but yeah, yeah. it's our thing now. Mm-hmm. Look at me, ESPN. Who's the captain? Usually, now? we hey. steal th- the thing. The key to this podcast hey, like is we steal things. I thought from there was a movie ESPN, podcast, and there then is. make them funny. You no, know, and then Let's people get mad at ESPN when ESPN says them. Shout out to ESPN today. I saw you retweet it saying they're looking to gain a un- uh, younger yes, audience. Yes, I think younger that's a great idea. To cancel yeah. these guys. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 trying to get a key. It, it, no, so what yeah, happened? So they basically got idea. peer pressured into canceling you yeah, guys because mm-hmm. how how Barstool is, I guess, a little, you know, a little risque. They got, they got yeah, really, oh, That was a nice I'll, French word there. I'll, I'll mm-hmm. say this on, uh, well, I'm French, Bissonette. Yeah. Do uh-huh, your research. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, is that why you give up? I'll so say this. Why you're such there's, a, yeah. I feel like so many so people hate you guys. You know, there's like some some jealousy, underlying jealousy, maybe of like yes. the money where you know this company is headed. You know, you know, it's unfortunate some of these other guys are losing their jobs because it's kind of like a dying breed yeah. out there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whereas I don't, I don't like seeing anybody lose their job. No, but 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 here's what's f- but, but but here's yeah. the Except thing. For, well, his life. They think you're the bad person because right. of the way you guys are. New age. But you feel bad that they're losing your jobs. They wouldn't feel bad if you. Yeah, they're like I guess they're like. Uh, man. Guy Lafleur, yeah. complaining about you know the 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 That's new what I'm age saying. guys. Oh, I just thought of a good uh, this, a hockey chirp. I just came, like <laughs> hey, when you're like 
when a guy's just having a tough practice, like you know he's been out, you're okay. just like mix in a water. <laughs> that's the one that always that's made a, me that's a tougher I got that one, one yeah. all the that's time. I like uh, when when a guy's losing a lot of face offs from the other team and he's visibly upset. You just go by him and you say, "Hey, bud, hit the rice bucket." <laughs> Get the, hit the rice bucket. Is that does but, that for, to make your forearm yeah, you make your forearm it's like stronger? A, picture, you know, you a lot of a lot of guys just are like what? Shut the fuck up! Like they're just like so flustered, like they don't even know what you're saying. Uh, hit the rice bucket. <laughs> yeah, people, like, people, you know, you just it's missed, more to make yourself laugh. You missed yeah. the net on a breakaway. Guys that left you. Like, you sure not a righty butt? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, actually, when guys would take penalty shots and they would have a bad one and they would go by our bench yeah, and they just, were righties, I would say, "Hey, try mine." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm there. And I'm, he's never. He's I had my stick one time. He never had to retape it. <laughs> yeah. I had my skates untied at that point because it was a shootout. <laughs> I'm like chirping guys from the bench. So wait, Whitney, you had to you retaped your your stick using different color tape. No, to try I was to like, white tape. No, but did, didn't you do it one time to like mix it up? Yeah, I tried one time and then I missed a wide open net. I'm like, all right, it's not the tape job. I agree. <laughs> that that's the Indian, not the arrow. You know? I, yeah, 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 I yes. agree that that's kind of like a beta mentality move to be like, oh, it's the tape's fault. Yeah, yeah but at some point in it when you know things were going the way they were for me, I'm looking to change anything possible. Yeah, I'm looking to blame whoever I can, not mm-hmm. besides myself. Yeah, that's um, how we do it. All right, let's wrap it up with the Seek Geek question. Put in promo code Take, you get ten dollars off Seek Geek. Uh, promo code Take Seek Geek. All right, we got to do it. Wait, you were hot tonight. When we're watching the when we're watching LeBron going to the locker room, we got to do it. We bash basketball. Uh, Biz Biz doesn't even watch basketball, so he doesn't even know how to bash it. No, he was bashing earlier today. Okay, so give it to us. Let's go. We got sixty seconds. Let's bash. Well, well, we can start at the top. Yeah, I I I'm not a fan of LeBron just the way he handles himself. I think he's a bit of a nose pick, but I mean, (laughs) but but I respect his greatness. He's unbelievable. He just he's so good. This isn't bashing. We're not respecting anything, dude. They fucking play music during the middle of the play. But don't bump. They're like, hold on, hold on. I'm not a big uh, Kid Cudi guy. Throw on some other rapper while I'm dribbling up the court. It's like. Like, unbelievable, dude. What other sports do they play music in the middle of the play? It drives me crazy. <laughs> and LeBron, he caught a pinky to the side of the head today. So he stayed down for 45 minutes, make sure everyone could take a picture of him. And then he went in the locker room five minutes later. And it's a probably, show. Probably liked a couple pictures on Instagram. And then he's like, all right, everyone knows I'm out. Let's go. No, he, d- he didn't do that because he's, uh, what do you call it? Zero Willis Dark Reed. 30. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, but he checks 30. out perfect booties on Instagram. Uh-huh. Yeah. You were yeah. actually, Biz was saying he earlier. He slid into someone's DMs recently, or, oh. or like a year ago, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. right. There was like a girl oh, in the car. Oh, that girl, Rachel yeah. Bush. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, Jordan yeah. She was in, Jesus, uh, what? Yeah, What's um, her social security? Yeah, yeah. No, I remember that story because her boyfriend's, uh, uh, he's in the NFL. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Biz was talking earlier about how you don't have to watch a game till the fourth quarter, which you, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, last like, two minutes. Last two exactly. minutes. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I'd say last quarter You know how like in football and hockey, it's like, fuck, they already used their timeouts. Like. Oh, hold on. The basketball, he's got 43 timeouts left because uh, he started with 75. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's, they, it's like manage used, them. What do you mean manage them? We got 40. Them. Just fucking throw them. Give a couple away. Here, I think that, that, that the guy in the crowd looks a little down. Let's give him a timeout. Yeah, yeah. He, he looks like he could use a timeout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, basketball is the only only league in the world where the coach will be standing outside like the semicircle drawing a play like Tyron Lue's, like looking over everyone. Yeah, and, like, and no hey, one's uh, paying attention, and, and LeBron's liking booty picks. What yeah. play are you going to do? Shut the fuck up, coach. Yeah. We got it. <laughs> yeah, go get me a soda. Uh, all right, well that was good. We're uh, done. Spit and yeah. well, I could do this for another thirty yeah, minutes. This is like, group, this is like group. work to them though. Yeah. Now there's such they, no, they, they've lost their, they've they've lost their spirit. Yeah. We're hockey oh, nerds now. Yeah, they forgot yeah. where they came they from. They started oh. for the love of the podcast, and now it's like yeah, they're like, out. okay, are we, are we up? Are we done? Do we fit our quota? Who do you work for again? Should I read an ad? Yeah. Can you hand me an ad? Yes, can we just absolutely. have you read you anything? Read yes. Oh, it's off the yes. computer? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Can you, can you do it off the computer? I've never done one off a computer. Both. T- I've only read two, and they've both been off sheets. Okay, hold on one sec. I'm going to get you an ad. Actually, no, I read one off my phone last night, and I, I, it wasn't good. Who's the biggest man missile in the office? I'd say the most handsome it's guy. It's an ugly office. It is. A- <laughs> it's an ugly office. <sighs> oh, Francis. Oh, you got is the hot Francis Man Missile. You like the gingers? Going the on red well, I mean, he, buddy, it, I mean, th- that's how pathetic this office is. The redhead's the best-looking guy. That's, I mean, like, that's, I mean, that's yeah, pretty bad. Pro- well, like, he's in. Decent and he's the funniest because he's got a comedy show. He went to Harvard too. Right, you know what? Like yeah, holy shit! If you read this ad, it's, it's going to take. What's his bumble? It's going to take match forever. Him. Four minutes. Yeah, it's, no, we're not going to have you. No, right no, no, no. I was no. looking for an ad, but there's so many words here, and I know you don't read well. Like, you're not going to be able to do it. Yeah, it's a fact. No, I can do it. It's a fact, dude. I don't <laughs> know, Okay, man. wait, try this. Try supporting me 
in a positive manner instead of trying to like get me to fuck up and and chirp me with. Try okay. it. Try okay. it one okay. time. Uh, Biz can uh, do you it. can do this. This can do it. You can do this. I'm gonna stand over your shoulder and help you. Okay, here we go. What kind of an ad is it though? Is there gonna be any Watch tricky out. ones? All right. So th- oh my. This God. interview was brought to you by MVMT watches. Holy cow. MVT has come far from being. Can we turn the brightness up a little bit though, please? <laughs> MVMT has come far from being. Crowdfunded kids working out of a living room. In the past year, they've not only introduced a ton of new watch collections for both men and women, but also expended to sunglasses and fashion-forward bracelets for her. Talk about your favorite... That's when you talk about it. (laughs) Talk about your favorite thing. And you think he's fucking... We love MVMT. I have the the sunglasses and the watch. Yeah, I wear the sunglasses all the time. People always say, hey, PFT, what kind of sunglasses you wear? Talk about her... Why are you moving it? I'm moving it here. Now read this. Recommended copy? Yep. Yeah, start with recommended copy. (laughs) Movement watches start at just 95 bucks. At a department store, you're looking at four to five hundred bucks. So right there, I don't know, I'm no mathematician. You're saving four hundred and five dollars, mm-hmm. based off the five hundred dollar watch. Yes. Mm-hmm. Movement figured out the, yeah, movement figured out by selling online. They were able to cut out the middleman and retail markup, providing the best possible price. Dot, classic design, quality construction, and styled minimalism. <laughs> Oh, I did not think you had that. All right, now there. Another, okay, okay, these are more numbers. Get 15% off today (laughs) with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmt.com slash pardon. See you, MVMT keeps, see why MVMT keeps growing. Check out their expanded collection. Go to mvmt.com slash pardon. Join the movement. That was sick, dude. All right, thanks to uh, Paul Bissonette and Ryan Whitney. Listen to Spittin' Chicklets. Thanks, boys. No problem. You fucking killed it, man. I know. You're actually getting better at it. I'm getting better. It's just confidence.